So as you can see, yes, we're finally talking about the Odyssey Maxwell wireless gaming headset. We have the PlayStation version here. Now, a couple things I want you to understand while we're diving into this video here. This headset still has a little bit of work out there. There's a few things that are still getting worked out, uh, the kinks and everything. Hence the reason this headset's actually delayed is because they had some firmware issues, which is still going on with the Xbox One, which they're working out should be coming out pretty soon here. So again, a, a little bit finicky, nothing game game changer, game breaker, or anything like that, you know, they're still going to get by here. Number two, this is not going to be a review. I'm seeing a lot of this in gaming headsets, these measurements and this, that, the other, and audio files, trying to get into gaming headsets and stuff like I stated from day one, guys, that's not what I deliver here. I deliver a gamer's perspective, a user's perspective, an actual consumer's perspective. I game with these and I use them on multiple platforms through multiple styles of games. I'm not geared just as FPS or anything. Play a variety of games and I actually test them and use them. Not some goofy marketing graph that means absolutely nothing. I'm going to give you the examples of a user and you can pick them apart that way. Because sound, again, is subjective to everybody. And the last thing I want to let you know is this will not be my only video on the Odyssey Maxwell wireless gaming headset here. I'm going to do an extravaganza just like I did with the SteelSeries Nova line when it came down. We're going to be talking about again the core here, then I'm going to compare it to the previous Penrose. Is it worth your upgrade? We'll do the Nova Pros, and then if you guys want to hear about some other headsets in between or whatever, I'll also do some videos on that for you. And I'm also going to cover the Xbox version whenever those come out. Right now we're talking about the PlayStation version and again if there's anything else you guys want to hear about that I don't cover in this video or some other headsets you want to hear about compared to it let me know and if we get enough feedback on that subject I will cover that as well but for today let's go ahead and dive into the Odyssey Maxwell PlayStation Edition so first off let's go and take a look at what we get in our box of our headset Number one, your packaging itself is very solid. As you see, right underneath the panel here, you have like a quick start guide. I might have that upside down, but you can kind of see the quick start guide letting you know a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about on this headset. But more importantly, the packaging of this is really solid. Nice foam wrapped all around it. Down below there is gonna be your accessories. So as far as shipping and everything, you don't gotta worry about it. Really, really solid packaging here. But of course, we're not here to buy a box. I just had to show you that because you're spending a lot of money here, you want your product protected while it's being shipped. But as far as what you get in your box is a USB-C cable. It's USB-C to USB-C. Sorry, my stuff's jumbled up. Again, guys, I've been testing this a lot in the background. So you got your USB-C cable. Now you have this USB-A to USB-C adapter here. Not too long, kind of short. And it's actually a little bit thicker than the standard cable over here. That is because, again, your dongle is a USB-C dongle. Right over here, we'll talk about it. You got PS and then PC for, again, PlayStation and PC. Now, again, this adapter here is so you can route this if you want. If you want to go into USB-A port on your PlayStation or on your PC, bam, you can just route it up right there. Short and easy. And then you get a 3.5 cable, 3.5 to 3.5. And then of course your microphone, which has an included windscreen over the mic. But of course you all know here on the Techni channel, we have to kick it off with comfort because if it's not stinking cozy, we're gonna wanna take it right off. It doesn't matter how good it sounds, how hyped up it is, how great the build is or anything. If it's not stinking cozy, you're gonna wanna take them right off. So kicking it off with comfort here, as you're seeing here, you have that full swivel. A good amount going forward, actually. So fully flat here and a nice substantial amount going the opposite way, as you can see. So it's going to conform to any head shape out there. Ear cups going in and out as well. Bam, right there. And your headband. You have this leather headband up there. You see, it's not elastic or anything. It's a leather that's going to hold its position and you can adjust it. Hopefully you can catch that in the camera right here those screws. Now you don't have to undo those screws to adjust the headband. Bam, just pull it out. You see it kind of clips out and then you're just going to press it in. Actually slides in fairly easy, but it's actually snug. It's not going to accidentally fall out on you. So again, that's how you adjust your size of the headband. Now a really cool thing hidden underneath the headband here is another headband. You have that soft cushion right up there, which the wire's actually hidden underneath there. If you press hard enough, you can feel it. I doubt you can pick it up in the camera, but all in all, there is a nice soft padding up there. So if you have this on the highest setting, 
Again, that leather headband just kind of give way and feel like it's floating on top of your head, which is a really good thing because we all know planar magnetic headphones, odd easy headphones, headsets, whatever, they do have some weight to them. And when we put this on the, on the scale here, we are getting one pound, 14 ounces. If you want some grams, we are going to get 494 grams. So yes, they're not lightweight, but they're not awfully heavy by any means but again the headband is done right it's not this tiny little headband as you see right here it's quite thick there's a lot of good coverage on it if this the camera can pick it up here right about an inch and three quarters here hopefully you can see that in the camera so again the headband's covering a lot of ground so it's not gonna you're really not gonna feel that weight on top of your head now as far as the ear cushions here let's go and get a measurement on those pull it up a little bit so you can see then going this way here and then as far as the depth it's a little bit shorter in the front in the back a little bit taller hopefully you can pick that up and yes you can take these ear pads off just a little twist -a -roo right there and you can see they lock into these little brackets on the side now as far as interchanging them no you're not just gonna be able to slide a different cushion on or off but luckily, yes, Wicked Cushions is in the works already. They already have been in the works for some replacement cushions for these. But looking at the stock cushions, fully pleather. Outside, inside, and on the top, but very, very plush. I mean, I love these things. Your ears are not going to touch the planar magnetic drivers in there at all. Because again, these ear pads are big, plush, and very cozy. Plenty big, plenty deep, no issues here whatsoever. But yes, with them being fully pleather, your ears are gonna get spicy. And in pretty much all of my test scenarios, with a fan on, with the AC on, or anything like that, I mean, I, I can't kid you guys, they are so incredibly cozy. You all know I got a bald head here, right? But even with that, they just sit on the headband, it distributes the weight perfectly across your head, and then the ear cups just kind of conform to your face right there, it's stinking cozy hands down even for a heavier headset the only flaw you're going to find here is again your ears getting spicy which isn't a deal breaker by any means but again keep an eye out because wiki cushions will be coming out with some replacement pads for these now one last touch as far as comfort here as we're going to be rolling right into the build the clamping force the clamping force here is right at medium it's not uncomfortable it's not unbearable but you do feel it but again, you feel it like it's a good quality pair of headphones or headset on your head right there. Nothing's pinching you, nothing's hurting you on any pressure points. As far as glasses, perfectly fine for glasses because again, the ear pads do give way perfectly fine. But it is right on that perfect line of a medium clamping force. But all in all, as far as comfort on the Odyssey Maxwell headset, hands down, 100% stinking cozy badge, no questions asked. <laughs> Now let's go and talk about the build of the headset. <laughs> Let me just cut to the chase. This headset is incredibly solid top to bottom. Again, we already talked about the headband. You got that leather headband right there. Really thick, really solid. Coming up over here to the top headband, it is metal reinforced. Coming right down here. You know, hold on a second. Okay, so we're going in a plastic bracket right here. And then you always got to do that tooth test to get that real test, right? Coming into the forks over here, and then this bracket here is metal. Your little screws going into here are actually metal as well. And the cool thing is they have a little uh, very tiny Allen screw down there. So if something ever happens, which I doubt it will, you can see easily to replace or get fixed. Our only plastic point is this right here, which uh, do I wish it was metal? Let's talk about that. As you see me stretching it out here, Nah, I don't think it needs to be metal. What if it completed the build? Sure, I think so. But with that headband, it stops right there. You just can't go any further. So number one, you're going to cover a big head for sure. It's going to fit all sorts of head shapes, but it's going to stop you from, again, stretching it out and stressing it to an excessive amount, which will put stress and then again, you know, cause cracking and then potential breaking down the road. You can twist this up, anything like that, and I am not getting worried one bit top to bottom. This headset is built solid, just like we see in the Odyssey headphone range. I wouldn't even, I don't want to do a bunch of comparisons, but you think about the Penrose, there's a lot of plastic on that. It was a big, heavy headset built pretty much all out of plastic. This guy is built like Odyssey headphones. If you watched any of my coverage on those, we all know those are absolutely solid. It's exactly what you have here. All right, 
You ready to get confused now? Because we're going to talk about the features and functions on the Auto Z Maxwell headset, and they are packing a lot, so bear with me here. I'm also going to slap this down in the background just so you can kind of see the manual, kind of showing you some basic controls on it while I'm talking about it. So number one, on the left-hand side of the ear cup here, you have your power button, which you hold down, and it'll power on or power off. You also have multi-function to answer calls, hang-up calls, anything like that with multi-press. You also have your mic mute button here, on and off, and you do get a tone in the headset whenever you use that as well. Now, looking at the back left ear cup here, as you see, you have your headset volume, and you can also double press this down to just your EQs. There's some presets in there, and then some custom EQs. Stick with me, because we're going to talk about that a little bit more. You have your microphone volume here, your game to chat, which you can also double press this down and adjust your side tone volume. And a side tone in this headset is really nice. It's really manageable. It's it's very, it doesn't feel like something's yelling at you, you know what I mean? Really nice, true side tone. Side tone on. Side tone off. Now over here, you got your 3.5 jack, USB-C jack, which is audio or charging. You have your microphone port. And then up here, you have your noise cancellation button. We're going to talk a little bit about that here. Noise suppression low. Noise suppression high. Noise suppression off. So as you see, we have a lot to go over in the features and functions. You're probably like, what the heck, man? What's going on here? Every button has a multiple function within it, right? Now, again, you can double press this over here and it's going to pair into Bluetooth. No, the Bluetooth is not simultaneous. It's one or the other. But say if you're playing a game and you're paired up to Bluetooth, you go on and you get a phone call, it's going to go right to that. You'll hear the ringing in there, bam, press it, pick it up, you're good to go, hang it up, bam, right back to your video game or your music or whatever the heck you're playing. Now, one thing about that, say if you're like scrolling to Facebook or Twitter or something like that, and you're scrolling through, and bam, there's one post that has some actual media in it that plays audio, it'll automatically revert to that. So if you're mid-game and you're just, I don't know, taking a break mid-round, scrolling bam this one post has some audio it'll switch automatically over to that until you post off it close it out and then it will go right back to that with a slight delay in there that was pretty annoying that 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 annoyed me it really did and that's again a case of non-simultaneous bluetooth right there it's going right to that one instead of your main one since audio is coming through it i think that's how they're making up for the battery life being 80 hours and really lasting for a long time it's because you don't got them both really running with that simultaneous in the background there it's one or the other which i have come around to really appreciating and liking you all know i used to love simultaneous bluetooth but honestly i never really played music while i was gaming I just really needed it for that phone call, for an emergency with my son being at school or something like that. And I got that right here. It worked really well. The other thing I want to talk about is this little hole you're seeing on the outside of the ear cup. You got one right there. You got this one right over here. What they're doing there is that's that noise cancellation little bit. That Again, you got this other button up front right here, which you can put it on low or high or off. I honestly didn't notice a single difference with that right there. Will you be able to adjust it in the software later on down the road? I don't know. We're going to talk more on that right there. But as far as me adjusting it here, I couldn't tell the difference. You put the headset on in general with, again, the medium clamp for force and the ear pads, it blocks everything out from you anyway. So, again, I don't... Maybe it's blocking it off so good already that you don't notice that. I even went and stood right by the dryer when it was running. Uh, my wife and son, while they're talking, and cycled the button. Again, I couldn't tell a single difference throughout any of them. Now let's go ahead and talk about our controls on the back left of the ear cup here. You have your headphone volume, which scrolls up there. And while you're on PC, currently there is a slight delay in that. Like if you just spin it once, really good spin, it's going to beep off on you right there and stop where it is. Like if it's 75%, it'll stop right there. So you kind of got to 
go back to it, go a little bit slower, and then again, get yourself to 100%. That was a little bit of a stinker there, kind of annoyed me a bit. Again, you can double press this down and get some preset EQs, which we're gonna talk a lot about in the sound right there. You got bass boost, competitive, footsteps, treble, all that kind of stuff. Now, you can create, I believe it's four presets. And by the way, when you're cycling through these on a headset, it's gonna let you know. So it's not like some of these headsets where it's like one beep, two beeps, and three beeps. You're like, yo, what the heck did I put on three beeps? I forget if that's like bass boost or something like that. But again, I believe there's four preset EQs which you can do, but right now it's disabled with this headset because the app is not working on iOS. Let me say it's not disabled for this headset. For my test, it was disabled, right? Not working on Windows, not working on iOS. Um, they're stating that it is working on Android. So I can't really speak on custom EQs or setting those or really using the app because again, I don't have an Android device. I have an Apple's device. Let me know if you're using Android and how it is actually working. Let us know down in the comments. Help us out here, right? By the way, both of these dials have nice tactile steps in there so you know when you're actually jumping up one or the other. You got your, uh, your chat wheel right over here. Now, the cool thing I love about this, again, being able to adjust that, but when you double press it, you get your side tone. The cool thing is no, you don't need this microphone in for your side tone because you got that built-in microphone here as well. But again, it's really cool because you can adjust your volume of your side tone. If you want it really blasting there or you want it kind of low or high, whatever, it's really nice and it's a manageable side tone. Some side tones you've heard before and it's just like, gosh, I can't hear anything besides myself, which is really annoying. This is a really nice, natural, true, manageable side tone, which I really like what they did here. Now, one thing I want to talk about that there, your 3.5 USB-C port, and then you have your dongle, which again, yes, you can get audio source through all these, but yes, all of them need to be powered up, right? You can't just use 3.5 with the power off. They have to be powered on in any of these settings here. And yes, you can use the headset while it is charging as well. Okay, so what I wanna talk about here is uh, those three different options to use. Again, USB-C, you got your dongle, and you got your 3.5. It's gonna prioritize which one to the other. And I don't remember which order it goes. I'll try to find it, find it and slap it up on a screen and let you guys know. But again, if it's one or the other, it'll go right to it. So like if you want to use your headset wireless or you know via the dongle while it's charged USB-C, you have to plug in one or the other at a certain time to let it pair up and go that way. But again, whichever one you plug in is the one it will use prioritize one over the other. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so now that I confused the heck out of you with those features and functions, let's go on and talk about the microphone test here, you know? And again, I apologize for that, but even while I was testing it, I'm like, man, how can you go over this? Y'all know, I don't take notes, I don't script or anything, I just kind of use it and, and kind of go, and that's how I want to talk about it as a user's experience. It, it was just confusing even using it, but it is implemented very well. But anyways, as far as this microphone test, as you see, right now we're using it without the microphone, and heck, this looks like a regular pair of headphones. No one is ever going to guess it's a gaming headset, which is what I really like. Let me go ahead and take this off, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this microphone in. Let's get it right here right there bam we're plugged in route this in front of me hopefully i wasn't too annoying for you guys and as far as the uh, sound and i can see the microphone is just coming up a lot cleaner let me put a little closer to my mouth right here but just just in general compared to what it was over there on my graph it is just coming up very nice very clean uh, it looks like i can pull a little bit away from my mouth right here you all know I talk with a lot of P's and T's, so it's really nice that they include the uh, pop filter, little windscreen on it right there to kind of eliminate that down. But nothing, even without this microphone, I'm not seeing anything overly just peaked or anything as far as that graph right there. Again, it's it's really pretty nice, and I love how you can just plop one in or the other. Of course, you got your side tone like I talked about over there, but really nice to be able to utilize it one way or the other. Now, one thing I want to test as far as this microphone um, is talking a little bit louder. I don't really test this too much in my headset videos, but I want to give that here. So again, kind of tone your volume down a little bit, and you're going to hear if there's any uh, screeching, popping, or any of that breaking within there. I'm going to talk a little bit louder. So, all right, now I am talking quite loud with the Odyssey Maxwell headset, just trying to see if there's any popping within the microphone as far as that loud, say if you're cheering or you got something really loud going on right there. Okay. There we go. Now we're done talking loud with the Odyssey Maxwell microphone back to that normal pace, but I also want to test that without this and in going into the built-in microphone here. 
as you can see now this microphone's out and i want to do the same exact thing right here and i can already tell with the graph it's a little off and on whenever i'm louder it peaks up big time whenever i talk regular it brings it down a little bit so let's go on and test this here so again we are testing the odyssey maxwell microphone without the stock microphone the built-in one my words are all messed up here i'm not sure what i'm even saying i'm just trying to holler here with the built-in microphone and holy smokes it is really peeking on my graph over there big time all right so there we go features and functions hopefully i covered everything in detail for you but the one one shining point here and again i'm trying to make this not a massive comparison because that's going to be in the the next video there but odyssey they really did it well in this headset it's simple to use it's user friendly and the notifications make it just that much better so you know what you're adjusting or what setting you're in you know what i mean it's simple, it works, and it's in place. Fantastic job here. It's doing everything right as far as features and functions. All right, so now for the part you all have been waiting for, the sound. Now, now I want you to get comfortable, grab a drink, grab a little snack, get cozy in your chair as I am going to here as well, because you all know I can talk a wire for sound. And I'm not going to flood you with some goofy graphs and, you know, random hocus pocus YouTuber audio file talk. You know what I mean? I'm going to talk to you gamer to gamer, consumer to consumer here. Now, talking about it using all platforms, PC, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Mac. Those are my primary devices right there. I'm listening to music. Uh, some alternative, EDM, hip-hop, uh, some heavy metal, stuff like that. It's just a big variety. As far as gaming, mainly you all know I love playing my Destiny. So that was a lot of my testing. Gran Turismo 7, holy smokes, I'm absolutely hooked on it right now. And there's some other new games that have been coming out. I was dabbling with them on there as well, you know. So talking about that, let, let's start at the core right here. Planar magnetic drivers, I think we're all quite aware of them right now, especially from Odyssey, right? What you're going to get from these is really nice, crisp, true, natural, really, I mean, it, some of you might not like how I say this, but a flawless sound, right? You don't get these drivers beating in and out at you, you know what I mean? All this crackling and it's extra noise from those going right there. The bass, the, the highs, the mids, it's all doing what it needs to do with Odyssey headphones, headsets, gaming headsets, you know, I've stated it many a times. And that's exactly what you're getting here. Across any game, this headset can do it. Whether it be racing, first person shooter, you, you know, a story game. Now, now, talking about that, I want to talk a little bit more about that, which is, you know, the EQs on this, which you can dabble through. You got the Odyssey one, you got Bass Boost, Treble Boost, Footsteps, I believe one's called Tournament. And... Okay, you know, the cool thing about those right there, whenever I'm testing in multiple games, is the adjustment between all of them is minimal, but noticeable. Okay, stick with me through that. So let's talk about the, the ones that I used a lot. I used Bass Boost a lot, which was just a little more fun. You got a little bit of vibration within a headset here and there when it was really needed. It was nothing overboard, nothing excessive, nothing that drowned anything else out, okay? So if you want a little more bass, you got that. But no, it's not heavy duty in your face bass. You know what I mean? It's a nice natural bass. But believe it or not, the weird thing here, which is something I've never done with any other headset, headphone, uh, DAC amp, any settings or anything, on this guy, I like using treble boost. It, it, it was really crazy because it was sharp. It was just crisp. It was so detailed, but I still had that back end bass. I still had that body. Gr Gran Turismo, perfect example, right? You're hearing a turbo uh, spool right there. The shift's going, the tire squealing. But again, it's not like this excessive squeal in your ears where it's like, God, yeah, that, that's a little bit too much. I don't need that right there, you know? You're, you're still getting that body of that wind and everything or the sound of the engine. You're still getting that. And that was super exciting. Okay, now, now even though that was exciting, let, let me stick on my treble boost setting here, which I really liked. And again, say if you're using a stock Odyssey one right there, treble boost, it's just giving you like, so let's say stock Odyssey sound. Let's put that in the middle right here, okay? Treble boost, you're just pulling the trebles up here. It's not like this much. So don't, don't think I'm saying it's like anything like drastic or anything, you know? Same with the bass boost, you know what I mean? Which is what I really love about this. They're all just mild adjustments. Nothing excessive or goofy that we see in a lot of gaming headsets. Anyway, sticking on treble boost there, 
I'm going to swing over to Call of Duty before we even talk about Destiny. And I don't play much Warzone. I just don't like Battle Royale games anymore. They're kind of stale. But anyways, I dove in there for my first time in... Golly, I can't remember the last time I played, right? I, I dove in there, flew in. The wind is coming over me, guys. Jumping out of here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not nerding out. I'm seriously nerding out. You okay? I think experience is coming fresh to me here. Anyways, I jump out of the airplane. This wind is just cutting past me. I feel like I'm actually diving out of that airplane. I'm hearing the little chain dingling or the clips or whatever off of the back of the parachute. It pulls it. It pops out. I'm hearing I'm immersed into this here, you know what I mean? It is so cool. Bam, I land. I hear someone walking all the way across the street in the other building. Okay, it is that cool. So I'm like, all right, let me let me get a weapon here. Bam, I'm jump. I'm gonna run over there. I'm not the guy that's gonna hide back here, you know? I run over there, I hear exactly, pinpointed where he is. All right, he's up the stairs a little bit to the left right there. Walk up there, bam, take him out. Done, right? I hear a guy across the street now. It's a window breaking, so a little bit more in my face this time. I can tell, all right, that window just broke. So I roll right back across the street, bam, I get him. You know what I mean? It's so crazy. Then I'm up on the hilltops and I hear this guy walking over there. I'm, I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, what the heck, I never play this mode. What's going on here? I should be dead by now, you know? It was so cool and just like, oh my gosh, this this is, I, I haven't experienced anything like this. This, this is super cool. Okay, let me tone it down a little bit here, guys. I, I had to share that experience. I wish I was recording it. You know what I mean? Now, in, in with the EQ, you also got a tournament mode and you got a footstep mode. Let me tell you what. I feel like footstep mode, again, we got Odyssey. We got treble boost. I feel like footstep mode's right up here where they're going to pull out those highs a little bit more. And I, I just didn't like it. It kind of took some of the fun out of the headset. It didn't make it any more... Uh, detail or, you know, signature oriented or, you know, wherever you're picking the sounds up. It didn't do any of that. It just brought the highs out a little bit more, took away some of the fun and the immersion in the background. Speaking on that also, there's an immersion mode on this headset, which I feel like, again, we got our uh, flat Odyssey right here, flat. We got our Odyssey, flat sounds so bad, right? You got that trouble. And then over here, you got your bass with our both right there as far as the boost as far as the immersion i felt like the immersion came over here into the middle and uh, you know accentuated those mids a little bit more and muddy is harsh to sound but i'm gonna say jumbled it was jumbled i love immersion within headsets but i don't like what it did right here it just kind of came a little bit jumbled sounded a little soft sounded a little closed in it was just like all right i got these other settings i'd rather go to the odyssey setting or that treble boost Sounds subjective, guys. I'm just letting you know my feedback here as far as within games. But even though some people get sold on that, yo, this is tournament mode. I've got to use this because I'm playing a tournament. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like what it did right there. Hey, you know, the other person like, oh, it's immersion. I'm playing this immersive story. I got to keep it right there. But again, keep it in mind. Don't get sold by the marketing or the naming of it. Actually experience it and see what you like. And again, for me at least, um, playing a lot of story games and just casual FPS. I'm, you know, I love winning, but I'm not like, you know, think I'm going to be some pro or something, you know, which everyone does nowadays with their latency and stuff. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Latency. We got to talk about that with this guy, right? But anyways, as far as that core sound, it 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 did it, guys. It really did. I'm um, going right into Destiny, guys. It was just so cool keeping it on again. That treble boost right there is what I always wanted to keep it on. The reloads, the sound of the weapons, the abilities, the enemies, the dialogue. It it, it was so incredible. And I thought when I was going to get this headset and start using, it, I was like, you know. I've used the Penrose extensively. They're still on my desk. I've used the heck out of them. You know what I mean? And I thought that's just what it's going to be. Okay, I've done Odyssey before. I've done Odyssey a bunch. I'm excited for it. It's going to be great. Okay, I'm not going to get anything else out of it. It's just, it's going to be great, but I'm not going to experience anything different. But I really did, especially coming from a gaming headset. Getting that right here was just, wow, it, it was so cool. Okay, so a little bit more on the sound right here. I want to talk about using it via Bluetooth. And I believe it's, let me, let me swing around. Bluetooth 5.3? Uh, yes, Bluetooth 5.3. And when, when I'm really that type of person that I will notice that bit of lag within audio going Bluetooth, especially when I'm playing videos. When you're listening to music, heck, it's closed. You're just playing the music. You're not going to notice anything, you know what I mean? But as far as gaming, but for me, especially videos, I notice that slight 
pinch of delay when I'm using Bluetooth. This Bluetooth 5.3 right here, it was minimal. Hands down, the best Bluetooth I've experienced on a gaming headset watching videos. Did I still experience that delay and could I notice it? Yes, but I'm talking, it was minute. It was an absolute pinch. Nothing for me to uh, mark a point off or anything like that, you know what I mean? But I did notice it very slightly. I think a lot of people, you won't even notice it at all. It was that good, speaking of latency. All right, all right. Whew. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go get a drink. I, I was getting gas there, right? Two more things I wanna talk about with sound. That's using it USB-C and also using it 3.5. Again, as I stated before, the headset still has to be powered on when you're using it with both of these. And yes, you can charge it while you're still using the headset. Now, using it 3.5, it sounded good, but it's nothing that's gonna be like, oh, yo, I got the new Odyssey headset. Running USB-C, it sounded amazing. It sounded really good, really crisp and just detailed. You're probably asking, does it sound better with one of these over running wireless? No. It doesn't, okay? That, that squashes that right there. The cool thing about it, why I wanted to even mention this here, is being able to use it while it's charging, which yeah, it can still be paired up to the dongle we're using right there. You can just plug it in, charge it like that, and it sounds amazing. It really does. So again, being able to have that versatility right there is really cool. But as far as using it while it's charging, again, with the 80 hours of battery life, I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all. Charge your stuff at, you know, every other day or something like that and you'll be perfectly fine. So one last note I just wanted to emphasize on a little bit more about the sound. I mentioned it before, might've just slipped by some of you guys though. And that is as far as using it with the app. Again, you're gonna be able to set preset EQs, save it to the headset, cycle through them, which I'm going to be shocked if we even need them on the Penrose. I've never used them. I like that stock sound. I love that Odyssey sound. That's one thing I love and praise about Odyssey across the board is their sound out of the box is great. You don't need to jack with it. You don't need to, which again is why I only like really those two or three presets that were in here, mainly sticking to treble boost, is that's what Odyssey does right. You have Odyssey. And that's what's great about it. But again, with the app, you will be able to dab with a lot more settings and everything. Again, if you have Android, you'll be able to experience that right now. As far as iOS, unfortunately, it's not active yet. I'm not too sure when it's going to be. But don't let that be a stopping point if you're looking at this headset. Don't be that thing that's going to like bring you down. Because again, I'm, I say it over and over. I just want to let you guys know you, someone's going to be out there like, yo, this dude's an Odyssey sellout, you know? I've tested so many Odyssey headphones up into the thousands of dollars, you know what I mean? The gaming headsets, their IEMs and everything. Odyssey does sound right. They do it absolutely phenomenally right. And that's what you get right here. It is fantastic. Oh, hold up. There's one last thing I want to talk about the sound here, which maybe I should have put into features and functions. I don't know, whatever. We're going to talk about it right here. And this is going to be great for a lot of you Penrose users. The range of this headset is perfect. It's amazing. I can walk all the way across my house into other rooms, not a single drop. It's great. We all remember with our pen rows, like if you lean back in your chair, it starts dropping off. You know what I mean? Or you put that dongle in the wrong spot, it starts dropping off. I can put this dongle into a hub, onto my PC, underneath my desk, and it was still phenomenal. No hiccups, no static, no delays, no drops, no nothing. Even no matter where I walked around, that goes as far as Bluetooth and running it via the dongle. So, oh, that's a great update. Uh, I believe I almost forgot to talk about that one, but yes, the range is fantastic on this. No crackles, no hiccups, no nothing like we experienced on the Penrose. Great to see that here. All right, so I have no idea how long I've been sitting here yakking about this headset to you guys. Sorry I've been going on and on. There's just so much to talk about here. This is my passion. I wanted to answer every question for you guys. And again, I'm gonna have a couple more videos kind of talking about these as well. But but wrapping up the Odyssey Maxwell here, the PlayStation version, coming in at 300 bucks. This is up there at the upper end of gaming headsets. You got your Astros, your Arctic Nova Pro Wireless, of course these being at 300 bucks. And no fluff, no shenanigans here, guys. I mean, you all know I was a Penrose fan. I absolutely love them. This does everything right. The build, the style, the comfort, the sound, the features. There's, you know, yeah, one thing. Let me, let me, there's, there's one thing. I wish when they were released that everything was ready. I understand they wanted to get them out. They had pre-orders, which I don't like when companies do that. They put pre-orders for products and like, oh, hey, we see a lot in gaming mice these days. You know what I mean? Some of your keyboard people with your keycaps and group buys. You, you've seen a lot of that come into like regular products. And I don't like to see that. You know, 
and now I know they're kind of like to appease the consumer that, hey, they put in a pre-order, so you said here, so here, let's just release them, even though some of the features aren't active, talking about like iOS right there, you know what I mean? That, that's a little bit of, a, or on Windows, that's a little bit of a stinker. But at the core, I don't think we need that stuff. Again, I haven't dabbled with it, so I'm just kind of talking out my ears. But again, it's fantastic how it is. It's given me everything I want. It is phenomenal across the board of everything you look for in a gaming headset or heck, even a pair of headphones. And I, I think it totally justifies that $300 price point. This thing is phenomenal. It's solid and I highly, highly recommend it. But like I have stated many times through this video, this will not be my last coverage on this headset. I have comparison videos coming up next week. Once the Xbox version gets released, I will 